So. Yeah, de- definitely. Um, so one of the big pivotal points in your career, I remember, was when you had had that opportunity with TNA. Um, and then as you had just kind of got it started with them, I remember seeing that you had that leg injury, that unfortunate leg injury that happened on the dive there at Ida B Mid-South. I think you were against Sarah Del Rey, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe you could tell us a bit about that. How did the TNA thing come about uh, originally? So I was doing a series of shows up in Milwaukee, up like up in the Wisconsin area. And I remember I was going from Wisconsin and coming down to Chicago to, to uh, do Ed Schumann's show. And I was doing Carmine Despirito show up in Wisconsin. And while I was doing his show, I was wrestling mischief. And we did this reverse Rana spot. But when she went back, something happened as I went back. And I felt like a warm pop and a hot burn right in, in the small of my back mm. on one side. And it really fucking hurt. And I finished the match, went in the back and put my cold back on, on, on the concrete. I remember like, taking my shirt up and putting it on the concrete, trying to get some relief. And I couldn't figure out what was wrong and like nothing was comfortable. And it was really like it was shooting down my back. So I went to the hospital and they come back and they told me that I tore one of the ligaments and that the the nerve was was also exposed or something. And that's what was the burning was the exposure and the damage to that sciatic nerve. Hmm. And I had torn some ligament in my my back and uh so i was like oh shit i gotta wrestle a human show tomorrow against mischief so then i come up with a smart idea that i'm gonna tape up my midsection to give some support so it's not just my lower back by itself maybe if i like stiffen it it'll somehow absorb most of that and then give me a support where i can wrestle and I get to the building and I tape myself up and I tell Mischief, look, if you don't mind, please, you know, work with the stomach. I, I'm, I'm like, it's really like fucking hurt. And I go out to wrestle and I go to get in the ring and I'm having a hard time even getting in the ring because I can't bend over. So I have to lean back and kind of like slide on the top rope. And I try, I try to play it off, but oh shit, that hurt. And so I go through the match and I wrestle. Mm-hmm. And we're doing all kinds of different spots and mischief completely forgets about my fucking back. And she bends me over backwards across her knee and she's pushing down and shit. The pain just like fucking shot. It shot both ways. It felt like everything was on fire. And then like, like I imagine that would be probably in hell, like that torture, that mm-hmm. feeling. And I was like, I said her, her shoot name. And I was like, Jesus, let me the fuck up. And I think I like, I hit her and I really fucking whammed her. And then like we went ahead and finished the match and I got in the back and I quickly cut the tape off and put my back up against concrete again. And this guy comes up and I can't really see him because he's standing with the lights behind him and I'm on the ground and I kind of got my arm up above my eye anyways. And he's like, "Um, are you Mickey? And I said, yeah. He said, "Um, are you injured? I said, I'm fine. He said, that's not what I asked. Are you injured? And I said, well, yeah, I am. He said, what's wrong? I was like, I tore something in my back. He said, you still showed up to wrestle. I said, yeah. And then he said, um, he gave me his number and he took my number and he told me that he's going to have somebody give me a call on Monday from, from TNA. So I was like, okay. Um, so I went home. The next day I get a call and I had missed the call and it went to voicemail and it was one of the, the secretaries, I guess, from TNA. And she left a voice message saying, ask me to call her back. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I called it back and sure enough, and went to TNA and I was like, holy shit. And then they were like, uh, are you busy? Are you uh, booked anywhere on this date? And I said, no, they're like, we'd like to bring you in. They get, tell me the deal. And I'm like, sure. So I get down there, and as soon as I get down there, I see some of the guys Ian brought in for IWA. So, like, I saw AJ and Loki, or not Loki. Um, oh, let's see. Really? Uh, I don't know. Oh, Homicide. Oh, he gonna kill me. <laughs> I saw Homicide. I wanted to say deep. I saw Homicide, and uh, 
couple of the other guys and they were like, hey, what are you doing here? So we start talking and then I see Jeff Jarrett and Jeff Jarrett comes over and talks to me. He's like, yeah, they were telling me about you. I heard you can take an ass whooping. I'm thinking, okay, I'm, I'm a punching bag, cool, whatever. I'm like, yeah, I can if that's what you want. He said, I also heard you can give an ass whooping. And I was like, if that's what you'd like. And he's like, all right, I think we're gonna get along just fine. And it was like a surreal experience. I never really felt like I belonged anyways, to be honest, um, but it was super cool. And then I broke my femur, which is like, eh. And so, I mean, you being there, I, I know you said maybe you didn't feel like you belong there, but I think that the fact that you are, you're unique, you know, you're, I think that's what I find really cool about you is that, you know, you, you don't see someone like you that can do the things you do. And I, I've always been a big proponent of saying to get into any company, any major company, I feel that you have to offer something that they don't have. So as much as you may see it as being a misfit, I, I see it as you being unique and having something they didn't have and they would want to present that to a national TV audience. So I guess it's just a question of perspective, but uh, definitely, you know, good on you for having got that. And I think it's unfortunate that it was cut short because I think you could have had a very, a very long run there. Uh, one of the things I'm, I just wanted to say before I, I, I give it over to you, one of the things I'm curious about in the story you just told was, do you remember who the guy was that initially saw you and, and scouted you and Terry Taylor. Oh, it was Terry Taylor. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I just felt that was a pretty important detail for our audience to know. Sorry. Uh, it's all good. It's all good. You, you were going to say something though, amidst my rant. So no, you see it as a misfortune. I see it as karma doing what needed to be done. Um, and that's not saying what happened to me was bad. Um, I needed what happened to me. I needed my leg to break. Because after the first leg, like when the leg broke, I had the emergency surgery. And then in November, I went back and they told me I was healed. And I went back to wrestling. So I was trying to get back on TV and TNA said, you know, um, they told me to take my time and heal. But everybody knows there's a shelf life to every offer. And so I was trying to hurry up and get back and I couldn't run and I couldn't jump and the pain was there. And like, I couldn't figure out what happened. And so I kept going back to the hospital, the same hospital that did surgery and telling them something is wrong. It's not fixed. And uh, they told me everything from, it was phantom pains to uh, I was just trying to get pain pills. When, you know, I didn't take the pain pills they gave me anyways. So with that being said, um, finally I went back in April and I said, look, I really need you to take an x-ray. Something's wrong. I'm afraid I might've recracked it. I'm not sure what's going on. I need an x-ray. So they, they gave me an x-ray. And the doctor walked in and said, Miss Knuckles, I don't know how to tell you this, but not only is your leg still broke, it never healed. I don't know why they told you in November it did. Here's the x-rays from November and today. There's an inch and a half gap between the two pieces of bone. The rod is the only thing holding it together. And I was like, hmm, that explains a lot. <laughs> like I was wrestling these matches. And I was doing these hardcore matches against like the hooligans and like me, Sam, Sammy and uh, Moxley all tagged against, you know, all three of the hooligans and a hardcore match. And I knew at that time my leg was broke still. I mean, we all did, but we, I mean, we made it work. I did the best I could. I fought through it, but, and then the second surgery, I had to wait for financial aid because they deemed it as not necessary medically necessary it was not life or death so i had to have um i had to get some financial services yeah. so i ended up getting um a loan and then paid for most of the surgery and then justin or uh ian ran the uh the benefit show but that money didn't go to the surgery so what what did it go to you mean you mean you never got it uh, we li I lived in the same house, so um, about a couple months in, uh, okay, so here's what happened. When I was training, I was living with my boyfriend, and we ended up splitting up, and I was working two jobs. Sorry, this is Lena Vachon. She's a jealous bitch. I'm sorry. Um, I'm, I'm not joking. Come here. 
That's Luna. <laughs> Luna Vachon. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyways, uh, okay. I was living with this guy, I started dating him, and then we broke up, and I ended up, I couldn't keep the, the apartment no more. I was uh, leasing apartments from this lady that I was also working with, and she was a bisexual woman in her 40s with this guy that reminded me of some, like, evil villain out of the 70s he was super creepy and they both tried to have sex with me and I turned him down well then the next day I was told that my services were no longer adequate for the job that was supposed to be performed as a leasing agent and that I needed to look for new employment so I lost that job and then I lost my apartment because I was renting my apartment from the same area and they served me with eviction notices so that was fun. And then uh oh, and all this while your your leg is injured. No, no, no. This is well before this. Sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. When I first started training. Okay. And yeah, I don't know where I was going with this. Uh to Ian and, and the money for the uh the fundraiser. Yeah, so no, that wasn't where I was going with it. Oh. Yep. I don't know where I was going with that. That's, Moving on. That that's okay. It was a compelling it story. happened to me. It, it, it's a compelling story nonetheless, because um, in thinking about it, I mean, to lose out on something because people pressured you into something that you didn't want any part of uh, is something that should never really happen. And nor should someone have to experience, uh, especially at a young age like that. Um, you know, we're all about the reality and reality can sometimes be harsh. Uh, I'll take it in a different direction. And if you, if you happen to remember where you were going, by all means, feel free to jump in. But uh, you touched on something I wanted to talk about, which is the um, the the financial impact of an injury, Um, because here in Canada, you know, we kind of have it good because we have more or less universal health care. So even if we're doing independent wrestling, we we get a bit of a boo boo. Uh, You know, we can just go wait for probably a couple of hours, uh, but we'll be seen, we'll be covered and and it won't cost us an arm and a leg, uh, literally or metaphorically. Um, I always admire American independent wrestlers because you guys don't have the same kind of coverage and any one thing can go wrong. You're looking at a serious amount of uh, medical costs and whatnot. So it really strikes a chord with me, your, your situation there that, you know, you had to go through all of that just to practice a sport that you love, um, you know, an activity, a pastime, something where you're maybe on the cusp of making a career out of it. And then you have that kind of a setback. So again, I, I feel like I'm kind of maybe rambling here, but all that no, to say, I know what I was, I was originally going and I don't know where, why I took it there. Um, no, what I was going to say is that the reason why I didn't, I had to look for financial services and I didn't get that money. Hmm. The whole reason I was telling you about in the beginning is because I was going to move in. I had ended up having to move in with Ian and his wife, Patty, because I had lost everything. Like I lost that job and I lost my place to live. I still had the second job and then I picked up another job at FedEx. So I was working at Burger King and FedEx full time and then still training and doing IWA shows, setting up, tear down, ref and doing whatever I needed to do. And so when I first moved in with them, like I felt I needed to help financially assist. Like I had this feeling of guilt for staying there. So I took all the money I made from the jobs and paid bills. And then it got into a loop of all my money I was making was going towards their bills. So I couldn't really save up to do anything. And then I ended up losing the jobs because we would end up staying over for a show instead of getting up, you know, and going and leaving, coming back. And I really had no say in it because I was with the whole group. So it's like, I can't really just tell them, hey, I got to go. So I ended up losing my jobs, which is whatever. And then I ended up doing just solely IWA for a long time. So when I broke my leg, I had worked for IWA for like seven years at this point. Yeah, about seven years. And I had lived with Ian Rotten and his wife and his kids. And I, we were supposed to like a family and then broke my leg. And it was like, it was either keep wrestling and help pay the bills or, you know, don't and then there's this guilt again so I wrestle to continue paying bills even though I knew my my leg was broke and then money that I was making was going towards 
a gambling habit. And so that it, it was just a vicious cycle. Uh, and I really not, feel like that's not, why my not, leg. Not, not to cut you off, just to clarify, when I mean, you said to a gambling habit, did you mean yourself or did you mean Ian? It's not me. Okay. Okay. And um, so like we were losing everything and my leg wasn't healing and the doctors couldn't explain why it didn't heal. And then an incident happened that I will not go into right now and caused me to like, I'm a very loyal person and I stay around as hardcore as I can, but something happened and it caused me to leave. And then because I left and I upset people, like lies were spread and it really made me want to disappear. Um, and then Tracy Smothers comes along and kind of helps me fall back in love with wrestling. But if I didn't break my leg and I really think my leg not healing was maybe you can believe in God, you can believe in a spiritual entity, something. But I really think it was something telling me that I was not where I was supposed to be. And the only reason I think that is because when I moved out, I went and stayed with my sister for a bit and I got away from the drama and the stress and wrestling and stuff. And the doctors were amazed on how quick my leg healed. Like they were giving me six months. My leg was completely healed in three. Like wow. that's how amazed they were by it. But I wasn't around the stress and the drama and, you know, that constant feeling of guilt and, and, you know, am I doing enough to support the whole instead of what's best for me? And, you know, I felt guilty for even afterwards thinking I need to do what's best for me because I felt like, I had been sucked into this thought of I was part of this family. And then I I come to find out I was just a big piece of shit. So mm -hmm. it sucks, but the, the leg break was probably the best thing to ever happen to me. Because mm -hmm. if I would have went on and made a career out of TNA or done something else, you know, there is no telling if I would have ever come to that conclusion or realization of what was beyond the rose colored glasses. Mm -hmm. that's where i was getting at with that see how right. i come back around <laughs> no you did a good job of that and uh i think definitely regardless of what you believe in uh you know everything does happen for a reason even if we don't know what that reason is in the moment mm -hmm. um 